Is the new 24 inch M1 iMac good for video editing? Well, it really depends on if you're editing with Final Cut, Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve and what codec you're working with. So today we will put it to the test and I will also give you guys some very insightful info on which model you should buy and what spec you should order because there are some major differences. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Now right at the gate, I want to say that even though this is not a high-end iMac, it is still a massive improvement from the previous 21 and a half inch model and the price is basically about the same and with that you get this new design, of course you have all these color options, you have the white bezels that a lot of people have complained about but as I've been using them, if you have a white wall, it kind of just blends in and you can focus on your content so that's not an issue for me and with this M1 chip that's in here, it's the same M1 chip that's in the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air and the Mac mini, but for people that are just starting out or people that want a you know, machine that's not huge and it looks good in their environment, this is an excellent option because compared to those other options, for this price tag, you do get that 4.5K display, which is, has DCI-P3 color accuracy. And if you're looking for a display that's color accurate and high quality, high resolution for video editing, it's gonna be tough finding something that is a decent price. So that's what makes this machine very compelling. It's an all-in-one package with the keyboard, uh, the mouse, everything you pretty much need. And I can see why a lot of people are excited about this machine. Now, Apple is gonna be releasing the larger models that are gonna have better performance. So if you guys want to see the performance of that in terms of filmmaking, as soon as it's available, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. Now, before I jump into the actual test, I do want to say that if you're looking to do video editing, you should definitely spend extra money on the $1,500 model. Not only do you get an extra graphics core, which doesn't give you that much more performance, this machine actually has two fans built into it and a proper heat pipe. Now, what that means is that under load, it stays a lot cooler and a lot quieter as well. So if you go for that base uh, one that costs $200 less, um, in that scenario, it's gonna be spinning up the fan to almost full blast whenever you're exporting, you're rendering, and it is a little bit annoying compared to this machine. It stays cooler and pretty much silent the whole time. To me, that's definitely worth it. Now, of course, on top of that, you have Touch ID built into the keyboard, which is nice convenience. You have Ethernet built into the power adapter. You have two extra USB type C ports on the back, which is good, um, and you get that extra graphics core that gives you better graphics performance, and that is important for video editing. So my first tip is, if you're buying one of these, you wanna do video editing, definitely spend that extra $200 uh, on the $1,500 spec. I did get the silver option in the base, and I'll be doing another video uh, comparing this machine to a 27-inch iMac, and I'll also throw in the results from that base model because it does heat up, it does run worse in performance. If you guys wanna see that, it enables those uh, notifications. And now let's spin this machine around and get ready for our real world tests. Before I dive into that, I gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making a new website or updating your old one, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. You can build a great looking website like we did with literally no web making experience. You just choose a template and customize blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, it's affordable, and I've been using and recommending Squarespace for six to seven years now because it just works and best of all, they have great SEO. So not only do you have a great looking website, but people will actually find it and that's what really matters. Go ahead and start a free two week trial with no credit card needed by going to squarespace.com slash maxyuriev or by using the link down below and when you're ready to launch you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain and now I'm gonna stabilize a 20 second 4k clip now I do this all the time because I love having nice smooth footage from slider shots gimbal shots it really helps out so I always try to run this test let's go ahead and get started BAM that is incredible six seconds and let's see how the latest version of DaVinci Resolve can do this hit stabilize Right away we could tell that it is running slower and if we look up here we could see that the GPU is being maxed out, it's at 99%. Um, so we are using GPU and bam, that took 33 seconds. And now for the latest version of Premiere Pro. It's actually moving fairly decently, way better than the Intel Max, even though we're actually barely using any of the graphics, about 8% right now in about 50% of the CPU. That is finished and it took 59 seconds. So 
Uh, basically twice as long as DaVinci Resolve and way longer than Final Cut. And now let's get into 4K editing with standard H.264 footage that a lot of people are still shooting, but we are gonna take a look at new codecs as well that could be tougher. Uh, I'm gonna start with Final Cut. I am set to better quality because we have a 4.5K screen here. It's nice to look at a good sharp image. I have two LUTs applied, so that's our color correction to tax the graphics and film grain as well. And if we hit play, you guys could see that the playback is perfect. No stutters whatsoever. And our graphics is used about 74%, 73. CPUs used very little. The machine's running cool and quiet. Now, before I test how fast this can export, I'm gonna go into DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. It looks like DaVinci Resolve is also playing this back perfectly. Uh, they're using the same uh, engine to play this back. Perfect playback, very similar performance, at least for this codec. And then in Premiere Pro, it looks like it's almost perfect. Uh, we are maxing out the graphics card now, which is interesting. It's using more GPU. We're running at full 4K quality. There's occasionally a little stutter, but it's definitely not bad. A lot better than the non-beta, non-Apple Silicon version of Premiere Pro. And as far as the export times, Final Cut took three minutes to export this five minute project. That is excellent. DaVinci Resolve took four minutes and one second. Also good, not that much slower, but Premiere Pro, even with the latest optimizations, took nine minutes and 42 seconds to export. Now, as far as H.264, five footage, believe it or not, these M1 chips and the M1 IMAX, they actually have an easier time editing this footage than H.264, both 8-bit and 10-bit 420. So if you have one of the many newer cameras where you could select a codec, do select that option because Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro are both a little bit smoother and also faster at exporting. Final Cut took two minutes and 25 seconds to export. That's even faster than my expensive Mac Pro that I still can't get rid of because nobody wants to buy it anymore because he's M1 Max. DaVinci Resolve took three minutes and 25 seconds and Premiere Pro took six minutes and 28 seconds. Still quite a bit slower, but faster with this H.265 footage. Now those other codecs are fairly simple, but what about difficult 10-bit 422 H.265 like from the Canon R5 and some of the newer cameras, even Sony's have this option. Well, as you guys could see, these M1 machines have no issue whatsoever playing back this footage, whereas a lot of high-end computers, even the iMac Pro and my Mac Pro, which is about 15 grand, stutters when playing this back. So people out there can sell their expensive machines, go down to an M1 and have no issues whatsoever. If you guys look, this 30 FPS footage is only using up about half the graphics card. We have the same exact story in DaVinci Resolve. It also plays this back without any issues. It uses a little bit more graphics, but not much. But unfortunately, if you use Premiere Pro, you guys can see what's happening. It's literally not even refreshing or we're getting like, not one frame per second, but more like three, four seconds for one frame. And that's because Adobe is not making use of the dedicated video decoders um, for this kind of footage. Now, what about exporting this tough codec? Well, in Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, the time is just slightly longer than with Easy H.265 footage, the 8-bit, and in Premiere Pro, it took eight minutes and two seconds for a five-minute project, so it doesn't take that much longer, even though Premiere can't edit this footage smoothly. And now let's make this even more difficult. During the announcement of this iMac, Apple said that this thing can even edit 8K footage, which sounds pretty crazy. So thankfully I shot a few 8K clips here and I shot uh, the first one here is 24 frames per second, 200 megabit per second, which is the easier one. And in Final Cut, it looks like, yes, it can play it back. Uh, the CPU is not being used very much. Graphics about 75%. This is without any color corrections or anything applied, but it's playing back perfectly smoothly. So yeah, if you shoot 24, it works. And then what about 30 frames per second? So we have extra frames and 400. So the higher quality, let's play this back. And here, I thought I had a couple stutters at the start. And this is handheld footage, but it's still playing it back really, really well. Now, what about once you add some corrections? I have a LUT applied here. It looks perfectly smooth. I see my playheads 
was a little bit choppy, but visually it was working great, but we are maxed out now at 100% GPU. So we are dropping probably just a few frames, but visually it looks perfectly smooth. So crazy, but at least that is Final Cut. Let's see DaVinci Resolve. Even with the same exact effects and correction as applied, the footage is definitely choppy. It needs more graphics power than what the M1 graphics chip can provide. And then in Premiere, the results are basically the same. It's choppy. The graphics card is just maxed out. Of course, you can make proxies, drop resolution, things like that. Um, but for these programs, if you're gonna use it, you wanna use 8K, I would just say, wait for the M1X machines that are gonna come out in the future. And as far as exporting times to 8K ProRes and Final Cut's not that bad, nine minutes and 10 seconds for a five minute project. In DaVinci Resolve, it is 18 minutes and 23 seconds and Premiere's 25 minutes and 17 seconds. So uh, in Final Cut, it's usable. Yes, Apple is right, you can edit 8K on this machine, but only if you're using their software. And finally, what about raw video editing? Well, initially I was gonna say, no way. I mean, this is an entry level basic machine. Yeah, you can get 16 gigs of RAM and whatever. You don't wanna do raw. And that's basically true because the graphics is the limitation. And now most raw codecs are decoded with graphics. And if you guys look with this 4.5K red raw, um, you guys see we do have some chopping. This is not horrible, but the graphics card is maxed out. Well, the CPU is just chilling there at 23%. Uh, but if you're editing with Final Cut, you can still get away with some of this higher end editing if you go into the better performance mode, where here the metal decoding is just really efficient. We're still getting a good amount of graphics usage, but you can actually get away with editing red in this way. And the 8K actually looks great in the better performance viewer. 4.5K, 6K, you could tell it's not sharp, but 8K actually looks good. So once again, if you're willing to use Final Cut, you can get some killer performance on a very inexpensive machine with a beautiful 4.5K display that's color accurate, fairly bright. So what is the final conclusion? Is the 24 inch iMac good for video editors? And for most video editors, yes, it is shockingly good for the price. Uh, it is an excellent machine, all in one, easy, and it just works. So there you guys go. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you wanna see this thing go head to head against the 27 inch iMac where you can spend a little bit more money but have a dedicated graphics card, and you guys saw that was the main limitation with this system, um, I'll have that video coming out. Enable those notifications. And once again, shout out to Squarespace for continually sponsoring the channel. I love their service. I was recommending them before I was sponsored by them. About, for about two years, I was making websites, recommending them to people I know. So it is fantastic. Try them out. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.